and welcome everybody. I am Emma Louise Elsie of the coachingtoolscompany.com and we are here today to talk to Dawn Campbell from the IAPCNM and I'm very excited. Hello Emma, thank you. So as you can see we've got a slide here. We're going to talk about uh, the difference between accreditation and certification, why it's so important to get accredited, the benefits of accrediting with the IAPCNM, what that accreditation process would look like in case you're interested in getting accredited with the IAPCNM, when to apply, so at what point in your career, your coaching career and business that you might want to think about getting accredited, and finally, how to get in touch and next steps. So I'm going to hand over to Dawn to tell us a little bit more. Hello, Emma, and thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to your community. Um, so if we move to the first uh, slide um, around certification and accreditation, uh, there's, a, a, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding around the two and how do they dovetail. So the easiest way to explain is that a typical example that we're mostly all familiar with is in the, in the field of education. Students go to university and they get a degree, which is obviously a form of, uh, of a qualification, they get a certificate. However, it's the universities themselves that have approached their accreditation body to get that course accredited in order for them to then give out certificates. So by definition, uh, certification is verification over products and processes and services or people. But accreditation is what I call the cherry on the cake. It pulls it all together. It's verification that uh, somebody like ourselves, um, well, certainly me as a coach, can demonstrate uh, capability to carry out a specific task. So all the people who come to us have got their certificates from a wide range of um, skills and backgrounds, and then they want to pull it together and become accredited so it's kind of like best in class okay great thank you dawn I, so what i'm what i'm hearing is that accreditation is something that kind of sits over the top of all the training that's available and makes sure that everyone reaches a certain standard exactly okay awesome a bit like a kite mark i suppose i think that's a very uk thing a kite mark yeah um, so why is accreditation so important? Mm -hmm. I think it's important for many reasons, both personally as a coach, but also to the public. Uh, increasingly, Emma, it's becoming a massive differentiator. If somebody's thinking about hiring a coach, one of the key differentiators that I'm hearing that they're talking about is, is this person accredited? Are they registered on an approved body's database? Um, it's somebody who has signed up to a set of professional standards and it's somebody who's had all their uh, training, certificates, experience, capabilities formally recognised. Um, as you say, it's about a set of standards. So it says to the public that this person has integrity, they um, adhere to the standards and ethics of the industry, that they're committed to following a professional code of conduct. But it's also about having uh, a sense of pride for your industry uh, and being committed to investing in yourself and your business. Ultimately, I suppose it shows your clients that you care about them and their well-being and, of course, their hard-earned cash. Um, so accreditation is increasingly important, not least um, when um, the social media uh, is very, very noisy. How do you stand out in a very crowded market? Accreditation creates that differentiator for you and helps the client identify you as a best in class practitioner. Okay, yeah, I like that. I was actually just looking at the bottom of your slide as well that um, through accreditation, we build trust in the coaching and mentoring profession. And I do think that's something as, an, as a, a sort of we're not, I, I see that we're often said that we're an unregulated industry. I don't think that's true. I think we are a privately regulated industry and I think there is regulation there, but I, I do think it's really important to build trust in coaching as a profession. And, and I think that accreditation is one way that we can do that, one very important way. Definitely. So, anyway, and I like that. To, to finish that uh, strap line, Emma, we say for the benefit of everybody. 
And I think we're the only accreditation body uh, that actually has that inclusive, um, that our end result is working with the public. You know, we, we've never set out to be the biggest coaching body, but we do intend and strive very hard to be the best. And our focus is very much on the end user. And I think that's important. Okay, thank you. That's, so that's, an, that's, that's a differentiator for the IAPC and Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so this is an important question. Anyone who might be thinking about um, getting a credential with the IAPC and M is what are the benefits of getting credentialed with you? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm pleased to say, uh, as we can show through this slide, we provide our accredited members a massive return on investment. Uh, so if I just split it up into sections on the left hand side, what we're looking at is the business of coaching, complimentary self teach 12 month business uh, module of um, e programs. So it doesn't matter when somebody joins us, they can just go back to the, the first module and work their way through it uh, in, a, in an order that suits them. And it's a program of uh, information, webinars, discussions with experts. So for instance, when it comes to professional services, you know, we'll be talking to an accountant, a webmaster and so on. Um, if it comes to a, how do you create a business plan, there's going to be templates there. So it's something that's going to help new practitioners establish their business. Um, but we've also got a, a program running in tandem with that for people who are more established. So sort of 18 months to three years, but maybe are a little bit, um, they've reached a bit of a plateau and they need some oomph. So we've got sales and marketing uh, material in that. So that's a completely complimentary program that they can do. On the right hand side, we've got 12 uh, capability CPD videos. Now, what we recognize is um, students have just had an assessment call to get through the course but we can't be, as the um, accreditation body, comparing apples with oranges. So everybody has to go through our assessment as well. Um, so in order to help people better prepare for this, we've created uh, CPD webinars for each of the capabilities that we expect people to do well in, such as um, powerful questions, listening uh, intuitively, uh, and so on. All of the benefits, which is encapsulated in the middle of a, a concertina leaflet, uh, which is an evolving benefits package, is captured in the weekly bulletin that we send out. Uh, at a moment, um, it's going out quite regularly because we have a lot of exciting stuff going on. Um, but it's always packed with CPD and business building material because we know that that's what our members need. We have many uh, people who graduate with great uh, certificates from their coaching schools, but they lack the business acumen to actually turn their passion and their dream into a business. So without that business of coaching program that I just talked about, quite a lot of uh, practitioners struggle. And when it comes to their annual renewals, they're telling us they're lacking confidence, uh, they're lacking uh, tools, they're lacking um, skills, you know, to turn it into a business. And that's why we created this level of support. And some of our members actually pulled it together, the Magnificent Seven uh, authors, mm -hmm. and they wrote this wonderful book of, um, it's a business handbook for coaches, but all solopreneurs will get something out of it. How to win, and just as importantly, keep clients, because we know it's 10 times harder to find a new client than it is to keep a new client. Um, so that's kind of a summary of, of all the value added benefits. And I think for the annual renewal fee, uh, which for a practitioner is about 34 P a day and for a master is about 55 P a day. There's not a lot you can get with that kind of money. You can't even buy a cup of coffee. Can so you? So what would that be in, um, us dollars? Oh, I've no idea. Um, 35 P I think it's probably less than 30, 30 cents. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, that sounds about right. I was just thinking for our international members. Yes, yeah. Technical members, 
and and I, d I do it in euros when I've got it written down um, in a in a document. I do it in euros as well. But obviously, with the the exchange rate, it does fluctuate. But m the point I'm making is, you can't buy a, a a cup of coffee anywhere. I don't think for thirty, forty, fifty p a day, and yet you can tap into the secure members area and download all sorts of material. So whether that's professionally designed marketing material for your website or whether you want to down, uh, download a, a legally proved contract or a complaints procedure um, or articles for inspiration or uh, a book, book template for formatting your own book, it's all there for our members. So they don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a mass of material to support them. I think you've got to do what they want to do and coach. Yeah, coaching and mentoring logs is something I noticed that you have. Yes. Um, and a code of professional conduct as well. Yeah. And some ethics. I think you've got an obviously an ethics. Yeah, standard. So all of those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right. What else? What else are we going to talk about here? Yes. Yeah, so what talk me through um, what someone would need to do if they were interested in becoming a member of the IAPCM. Actually. There's a um, membership and there is a, an accred become credentialed, is it? Well, there's two become? routes to accreditation. There's the route where you've come through an accredited training provider. So that's an accredited training provider that has come to us and we've worked on their program and we've accredited. And we've got about um, 30 training providers now around the world, Singapore, India, uh, Spain, all over the place who have brought their program to us. And it could be a university, it could be a training provider. And we've worked on their program and it's become accredited. And one of those is Noble Manhattan, right? I was just trying to think of something that yes. a more international audience. So yeah, Noble one Manhattan of them is, is one. Noble Manhattan. So as yeah. a benefit to them, having invested in their course, is that all their students get a fast track route to personal accreditation. And because it's got less work attached to it, there's obviously less cost attached to it. So they have quite a substantial uh, discount. So that's the accredited route. Um, and then there's the portfolio route, which is somebody who hasn't come through one of our accredited training providers. Uh, they, we have to do more work and that has to be paid for because we don't know anything about the course that they've come through. Uh, so there's two routes to accreditation and we're inclusive. So um, as long as you um, have got experience and you have um, uh, some sort of training uh, background, you're more than welcome to apply for your accreditation. All the criteria is actually laid out on the website. It's really quite user friendly for you to work out which is the, the status level for you. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. So the then there is a membership, which is your level. Okay. So, oh, that sounds terrible, Dawn, my level. No, so I joined as an associate member or as part of, um, because I wanted to support you, I'm not an active, I, I have a couple of clients, but I, I'm not really what I would call an active coach anymore. So I have joined uh, the IAPCNM as an associate member and I'm very proud to do so. Thank you, thank you. So just to answer your question about the actual process, we're totally automated, we're a virtual business. Um, so you go onto the website, you would choose the status and you'd make your, your payment, uh, following which you'll receive a very detailed, uh, email, uh, welcoming you, thanking you for your payment and detailing that criteria, nothing new that wasn't on the website. Uh, and then you can just work your way through it, uh, in terms of building your evidence, uh, portfolio. One of the things that you need to do is book your assessment call. So let's just say you're coming in as a fairly newbie. Um, you've just qualified as a coach and you haven't got very many hours under your belt. Uh, we ask for a minimum of 60 hours coach training and a minimum of 60 practical coaching hours. It doesn't even have to be paid for uh, hours. It can be in your study buddy groups, a pro bono, et cetera. But that will then mean that you're eligible to apply for your accredited practitioner coach status. So for that level, it's a 30 minute assessment. If you've come through the portfolio route, again, because we don't know you, we don't know who you trained with, you do also have an interview and that's a business capability based interview. And as you go higher up the level, it moves from 30 minutes to 40 minutes to 50 minutes to 60 minutes for the assessment call and the interview. 
The only piece of written work that we request is um, that you do a self-reflection after your assessment call. It's just two or three paragraphs. What did you get out of that experience? And what would you do better next time? The reason why we did away with the, the thesis is because we're a capabilities-based model rather than a competencies-based model. Therefore, we don't want to hear that you understand and can write about the theory really well. That doesn't necessarily translate into somebody who intuitively has the coaching skills, the listening capabilities, the good questioning techniques. Uh, and that's very much why we um, base our work on the accreditation and the interview. You'll sign the professional code of conduct, which you can put on your website and you'll fill out the standards and ethics questionnaire. Uh, and then on successful completion of pulling all of that together, uh, which only takes usually most people in between two to six weeks, um, you get your certificate to promote uh, anywhere and everywhere and you get your logo and it's valid for three years, providing you pay your annual renewal fee. So um, at the end of three years, everybody, whether you're a university, a training provider like Noble Manhattan or a fellow coach uh, and director my, like myself, we have a mini reappraisal. This is to maintain the highest possible standards. It's about making sure that whatever we originally accredited is still being delivered. Okay, so that's the process. That's pretty thorough. Um, I had another question and I have forgotten it briefly so I'm hoping it'll come back to me um, I'm wondering what else we need to talk about today because we wanted to talk about here, here we go um, when should you apply yeah <laughs> when is a good time to think about um, a professional status or credential and status mm -hmm. well increasingly so, what we're finding is um, People studying to become coaches aren't doing it because it enhances their corporate role. Increasingly, it's because they actually want a business as a coach, whether it's part-time to supplement uh, another business or a corporate role, um, or whether it's because they um, want to go all out and throw open the doors and say, hey world, hire me, I'm a, a practitioner coach. So what we've said is that people can apply for their accreditation before they finish their studies. Uh, they don't have to wait to get the certificate from the likes of Noble Manhattan. Um, it means that in conjunction to studying, they have access to all the benefits and resources. So while they're studying, they can be building their business. They can go to the resources area and they can download the contract. They can take advantage of discounted insurance, discounted website uh, hosting and design. Uh, they can start uploading adverts that are professionally designed and paid for by our marketing team. They can have all of that. So when they do become certified uh, and say, right, I'm now qualified, they're also accredited at the same time and they can really go hit the ground running, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking as I was listening to you talk there, Dawn, was I know that I, I did not apply. I left it for quite a while to even think about getting accredited. And I, I'd moved country by then. I was in a new country. I found out that the, um, the ICF didn't even, hadn't even heard of my coaching school, which is actually the same school you went to, um, and hadn't heard of it, even though it was the biggest training school in Europe. And I... I was a little immature, I was a little piqued by that, and I thought I don't want to have to go through all these extra hoops um, just to get accredited, so I didn't. And then, I, and then by the time I thought it would be a good idea to get accredited, I had like two, three years of, uh, of you know, evidence to pull together, and it was just so much work, and I wish I'd done it sooner. Yeah, well, there is a solution to that. Um, as I keep saying, we're very inclusive uh, and we want to make it as easy as possible to accredit the best practitioners out there. And if you and I had had that conversation, then I would have said, look, it really doesn't matter because the longer you are in business, uh, the more I find that people aren't keeping CPD logs and coaching logs. And it's just another bit of admin and you're already really busy coaching and running a business. So we have a very simple formula. Uh, which says, how many hours a week typically do you coach or mentor? Then you times that 
by 48 weeks of the year, because nobody coaches 52 weeks of the year, times that by the number of years you've been in the industry, that gives you a ballpark figure. You can substantiate that with a letter um, and some testimonials. And we're absolutely fine with that because we know having interviewed you, if you've applied for the wrong status or you're not as experienced as you think you are, uh, it's going to come out then. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Should have met you a long time ago, Dawn. Okay. So um, what next, I guess? Uh, yeah. Talk yeah. us through how we get in touch with you. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we tend to think uh, that what we do now is obviously going to have an impact on who we are and where we are in years to come. So I guess if you're not ready to become accredited, you need to be asking yourself, if not now, when? And perhaps why not? Uh, what is it that you need uh, to know in order for you to feel that this is the right organization or the right time for you to become accredited? Um, so just contact me through the contact page or email me directly and uh, we'll um, jump on a, a Skype or a Zoom call and have a, a tea or a coffee or a smoothie in my case and get to know each other a little bit better. And then when you're ready, we'll welcome you to our global community of practitioners. That's it really. Yes, I did notice on your website, I was taking a look around that you said you're not an email culture that you like to actually talk with people individually. And that is something that, that would set you apart from um, an organization like the ICF. Because I know that's one of the things when we first um, kind of got in touch was I was curious how you were different from the ICF. And um, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit to that. So people who've heard of the ICF but haven't heard about the IAPCNM. Hmm. Well, we're an independent organization. We're the only accreditation body approved by the British Industry Ombudsman, and that holds a lot of kudos uh, for some countries. So Singapore, India, um, Romania, the sort of old Eastern Bloc countries, they really do appreciate that sort of prestige. Um, and we are a, a, a very small team of coaches and mentors running this organization for the benefit of coaches and mentors so that they can provide a better service to the hiring public. Um, so we don't have a, a, a team of shareholders that we have to report to. You know, if we want to change something because feedback from our members is saying to us that doesn't work, then we're at liberty to change it. Uh, and that's what we did uh, exactly that three years ago. We, we changed everything. We did a massive amount of surveying and listening to people and we pretty much changed everything. Um, and the people who have been with us for donkey's years, because we've been accrediting since 1998, say that the, the, the changes that David and I have made since we came on board uh, three years ago has made the company unrecognizable to what it was before. And one of those changes was that we wanted to get rid of the email culture. We're in the business of having a conversation, aren't we, Emma? That's what coaching yes. is. So why would we hide behind a, a website or emails? So yeah, we very much have an open door policy and we love networking. We love talking to people. It's only by our training providers talking us through their course or our coaches and mentors talking to us, are we able to say, do you know what? I think you should meet such and such because I, I'm, I network like an Olympian. Uh, and I know you do too, because you've sent me loads of lovely people. Um, and that's how we build a community because we know each and every single one of our members who wants to engage with us. That's not to say everybody does because some people see it very much as a tick box exercise. Maybe they need it to apply for a tender in a corporate world and they just want their annual certificate and they don't join in. Nobody has to, but a vast majority of our members who have come on board in the last three years, they know David and I really well. They will get on the phone, they will email us and say, hey, you know, I need a quick Skype meeting or can you help me? I need some supervisory um, help on this or I need some mentoring. Um, can somebody interview me? I've got a new book coming out. So we act as an extension to their sales and marketing team. So yeah, very hands-on approach. Very hands-on and, and much more personal. So that's that's one of the benefits of joining the IAPCNM is, is the 
the personal touch and that that feeling of of being heard listened to and and actually things actually happening if you want to see something different yeah I mean, it, you know, you don't have to uh, believe me because obviously I am the APC and I'm very passionate about it. Uh, and one of the things that we introduced was if you had, uh, you know, if you feel that you've had a really positive experience, particularly those who uh, can compare us to some of the other accreditation bodies, write a testimonial and put it on the website. So if anybody's interested, just go to the blog section, type in um, feedback or testimonials. Um, and you will see the comments that people make. They're absolutely amazing. Not so much about us, but what the process has helped them gain from that experience, the massive boost in their confidence um, and how proud they are that they've been able to have this affirmation that they are really good coaches, mentors, and so on. So it's not so much testimonials about us, it's about what they got from that experience. And I think that's what's more important. Okay, that's really helpful. I was just looking here and thinking if people want to learn more, um, it's coach-accreditation.services, as we can see in your email there. And then that's a long email address, but you can just go straight to the website, coach-accreditation.services. Exactly. And I think you mentioned it once already, but for those people who didn't catch that, if you are interested in um, working with Singapore and all of those countries you mentioned, as well as in the UK, if you're looking at getting UK clients, mm -hmm. the IAPC and M is the only approved um, accreditation body for coaches by the British Industry Ob Ombudsman, and that means something in the UK and Europe, um, and it, that's that's quite big. So. Yeah. It'll be recognized then if you want to go into corporate um, environments in the UK and Europe as well. Mm, exactly. And Asia, of course. And Asia, yes. Mm. Okay, so what? Where, how do we wrap up, Dawn? Are we... I think I, I, that's I, it, unless uh, you've got any more burning questions. I think I asked my burning questions. I, I think the only thing I wanted to mention was the British Industry Ombudsman, because that was a thing that impressed me, and I know that to, to get coaching taken seriously in industry is important. So that was, that was something I wanted to highlight. I'm mm -hmm. just looking at my list here. I think that's all the questions I wanted to ask. Um, okay. Well, thank you for your support. Um, and also thank you for this opportunity to talk to not only you, but also your community. I really appreciate that, Emma. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I really enjoyed getting to know you, Dawn. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.